Now, about a year ago, I created my very own car dealership on a Rust Vanilla server. But see, there was quite a few problems with this car shop. Ah! Finally, a player! Would you be interested in buying a brand spanking new, refurbished from the scrapyard just yesterday, car? What do you mean, do I want to buy a car? How much? Well, for you, I can probably cut you a deal and just, you know, we'll say 5,000 wood and the car's yours. Hell no. Not for 5,000 wood. All right, you know what? Well, I'm tired of standing here, so just freaking take the car. It's yours. Have fun. Thank you. See you later. See, the problem was I couldn't sell a car. And in the end, I just gave them all away for free to naked on the beach. So why did nobody want to buy a car from me? Well, you see, cars back then required keys in order to lock. And you had to carry this key around with you at all times. If somebody killed you, they'd be able to take the key from you and steal your car. So for most people, the effort of owning a car wasn't worth the risk. And so even on the most populated servers, cars were just abandoned in the roads and never used. That is until today, of course, because Facepunch decided that instead of cars requiring keys, they now have code locks on them. This means that nobody can steal your car even if they kill you right next to it. Now, all of a sudden, cars are not abandoned in the roads anymore. In fact, every time I've joined a High Pot Rust server, I've just been seeing people driving cars around. All of a sudden, these things are way more useful to people now that you can't steal them so easily. And so with this, I've decided to bring back my car dealership. Hopefully this time, we can have some success in our little business. So without further ado, this is one week's worth of Rust content recorded on one of the most high pop main servers. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. And so begins our quest to build a car dealership on a main Rust server. Now to start things off, we need to find a place to live. There was a few options. Initially, I was scouting on the left side of the map over here because there was quite a few roads and a couple of monuments. I figured that this could be a good spot for our business. But after dying a few times right here, okay, <laughs> I quickly realized that this area was gonna be more hassle than it was worth especially when we've got our goals set on building something different. We don't want to be spending the entire wipe defending ourselves constantly. So that's when I found this area of the map over here. There's a dirt road stretching right from the main road here, and it leads straight to the ranch. It's next to a fresh farm beach, but it's still a hot spot for all types of customers because there's a road that links everything together. So this right here is going to be the spot. Let's go and scout it out with our own eyes. Sleeping bags being crafted. I'm almost at the ranch area. In fact, I think we're about to witness a PvP fight. We've got this guy here with his bow. Seems to be crouching up here for some reason. I don't know if he's heard something, but there's nobody up there. He's got his bow out. Is that yep. <laughs> there's nothing up there. Oh, there you go. I set the chicken. Ah, I can already see a car right there. Going to be needing a lot of these, that's for sure. Right, let's get the bag down. I'm at the dirt road. It's really flat around here. I quite like this. It's quite calm right now, but I imagine it's going to get very hectic very soon. <laughs> All right, so that's that. We are building our car shop on the dirt road near the ranch. Now to start things off, I'm gonna play it very safe and I'm gonna farm all the wood we need to build our starter base in the safe zone of the ranch. I'm not quite sure what to call these type of rust players, but believe it or not, some people spend their entire wipes in a safe zone, like this guy. I'm gonna go ahead and farm with this guy. Just immediately runs away from me. See ya, man. I'm stealing your tree. Uh, hello, sir. I owe you an apology. I stole your tree. Nobody talks at the ranch. What's going on? I think I'm just being a pain is what I'm being. Ah, yes. Sorry. I'm being a, I'm, I'm being annoying. Okay, we got enough wood to build a base now. Sorry, I've got enough, I've got enough to build a base. Do you want to live right? Do you want to live next to me? Should we build bases next to one another? <laughs> I invited him. I don't know if he'll accept. I think we got off to a bad start stealing his tree, to be honest. All right, let the base building begin. Absolutely perfect. Nice flat right next to the dirt road. And we've got lots of wiggle room to build something pretty big right here. 
get that TC as close as we can. There we go. Practically going through the wall. Craft a lock for that. And locks down. Okay, we've got our base. So I really like this spot. As I said, right next to the dirt road. I can just picture our car dealership right here as you approach the ranch over there. Okay, by the end of this video, hopefully things go to plan. This is going to look magnificent. All right, the start base is down. Now, so far, things have been pretty calm around this area. But well, that's about to change. Okay, there's, play there's gonna be lots of players farming up. Uh, oh! Okay, we gotta get our base upgraded. I'm the only base here at the moment. <laughs> and I've just got- Oh no, there's a new guy behind the rock over there. Now, just a heads up, but what you just heard outside my base was an innocent paddle farmer getting destroyed by a guy with a revolver. Unfortunately, this will be the fate of many coming along this dirt road. Now, the fact that this mysterious man has a revolver so early into the wipe and is going around the ranch killing people says a lot. So just keep that in the back of your mind, because I definitely love to be the dealer of some good old karma. So maybe we can deliver some of that for this poor, innocent, naked paddle farmer, whoever you are. Okay, that's our closest neighbor. Headshot, boom, first kill of the day. I'm really close to the ranch though. Oh, it's my mate. Well, I say mate, he, he didn't speak a word to me, but I did try and start a team with him. And then I just killed him. I kind of want to grab that wolf. No, we've already got the wolf skull. That's like the best thing you can get from it. Okay. I'm about to make it back to base. I can hear the revolver guy just over there. I've got a feeling he lives in that base behind the rock over there. We'll go and have a look in a second. But we made it back. Let's get that furnace down. Let's get the sheet metal door crafted. Got a bear rug already. You can hear the guy with a revolver just destroying everybody, though. All right, furnace is on. Just wait a few minutes. There's a fight going on outside. I'm going to get involved. Oh, my God. There's a lot of them. School, Nikki. I think there's one more. Nice. Okay, two more. Kind of want to grab the... Uh, I'm just going to move. I don't want to let them know I live in this base, though. <laughs> so I'm not going to go inside. But, I, okay, there's a few that live in that rock base right next to me. We'll put it that way. We've got nothing to heal. We could try and take a rock as cover and try and take this guy on. Oh, we could just run. Okay, I want to get that sheet metal door down as quick as I can. Okay, well, we know that that rock base over there has got quite a few people living in it. Oh, God, I've just gone down. I didn't even realize. To be fair, I don't think they had a revolver. So I don't think that revolver guy actually lives in that base. How are we doing, Furnace? Close, but not quite yet. Okay, I'm just going to wait before I do any base upgrading for this furnace to give me enough metal to craft the door. There might be a spare bow on the ground that I, I didn't pick up, and whether that guy spotted it, I don't know. Let's go have a look, and maybe we can investigate that base next to us real quick while we're over there. There is two players there. Nice, 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 nice. And now he's going back over there. I, so I want to get an airlock on my base. What am I doing? Just shooting from a one by one. Like, good idea, Jordan. Way to get raided right there, mate. Doors down. Locks on. Okay. <laughs> Upgrade all of this to stone. Should have a... Should have a... Yeah, should have enough. Good stuff. That's quite nice. And uh, let's also place a sleeping bag inside the base, just in case we start getting, uh, just in case I hear that Ioka shot go off. Okay, I think the bow was picked up. Either that already despawned. Hello there, naked man. Hello. Russian guys live here. Privyet, my drug. There's three of them, I think, actually. Right, well, there are, we've got some intel. They're our closest neighbors. See, I'm living out in the open this wipe. I'm not I'm not doing any of my usual solo tactics where I'm like against a rock cliff or on an island or any little sneaky spot. I'm literally right in the middle here. And uh, over time, bases are going to surround us. How are we doing, Furnace? Almost got enough for a double door. Okay, sheet metal door's being crafted. And we can get straight back out then. I'm just going to go around the area and see if I can get some kills. All right. We need 
15 scrap for the tier one. Can still hear that revolver guy going off. All right, let's go. Back out into the action. All right, so things are moving forward for us. We've got a base down. We know who our neighbors are. But unfortunately, things are not all smooth sailing. Because as you can see right here, I lost a bow fight to this man named Meku. Good crossbow skills, mate. Now, cloth is in high demand on wipe day, and it's pretty hard to come by. So instead of crafting more bows and wasting unnecessary cloth, we're just going to get that tier one workbench down and craft some crossbows. Okay, we've got 41 scrap. I'm going to get nine more so I can get the tier one down. We've kind of uh, devolved back to a rock. And it can happen very quickly on wipe day. As soon as you lose that little bit of uh, wood storage and cloth, you go back down to square one pretty quick. Hey, eight scrap. Okay. Let's get that tier one crafted. And let's get some crossbows going. Level one workbench is being crafted. Okay, the progression is back. I wanted to craft a revolver, but I don't think we've got metal pipes yet. So um, if we're, one thing I'm definitely going to do is craft crossbows and maybe even nail guns as well. Because the crossbow nail gun setup, OP. Hey, wait, it's you. Hello. He's still farming the ranch. Howdy, partner. You kill me, bro. I know, I, ki friend, I, I killed not, you, not I'm sorry, friend. I'm sorry, now you speak, now you uh, speak. My bow? Well, I my can't, I've, I've lost your bow, I'm sorry, I've lost it. I'm poor, I cannot repay you, sir. <laughs> now he starts talking, and he's still in the safe zone, brilliant. Alright, it's time to craft that crossbow, oh wait, yeah, it's time to craft the crossbow. And kill the guy with the revolver. Although, that's probably not going to happen. But you never know. Alright, now we're going... Now I'm going to make a trip to the abandoned supermarket. Because I need some... Or the harbour or wherever. Because we need sewing kits. We've got to start collecting sewing kits to recycle. It's the best way to get cloth. Ooh, metal pipe. Oh, Awesome. Okay, I'm at the lighthouse. Okay, I just saw somebody zip line <laughs> straight into the out uh, the lighthouse. There's a lot going on at the fishing village. Everybody's doing the fishing quests, which I personally love, but I don't want to bore you guys to death. You guys don't want to see me fishing, can I imagine? But, I mean, you do get some good rewards from it. Okay, sewing kits, just what we're looking for. Okay. Oh, there's somebody using the recycler. The lights are turned off. I can't see anything. I need to turn the lights on, ideally. Okay, lights are on. There's a guy there. Oh, he's just... Oh, did he survive? He just jumped to his death. What did he have? Oh, he got up. He got up. He got up, the lucky bugger. Hey, there we go. He had a green key card. We'll take it. Let's recycle these sewing kits and loot the rest of the stuff here. And then maybe go to the fishing village for the night. Spend it with the good old fishermen of Rust. You can't get more wholesome than some good old fisher people. Hello, sir. Okay. Recycle. Oh, he left some stuff in here as well. Sewing kits. That that will do. We've got 28 seconds on the timer before we can enter the fishing village. And we'll keep all the rope for extra crossbows as well. Sometimes I recycle rope early on for extra cloth, but loads of water. Oh, I just got more sewing kits. Hang on. All the extra cloth we can get, the better. We're already on 160, and that's just from one run. Okay, I'm hearing gunshots, so that's not good. Come on, recycler. Come on, recycler. Okay, get it. We need to get out of here. We need to jump in the water, swim over to the fishing village. Let's go. Hello. Gotta get out of that chair, man. Hello. Oh my God. Greetings. What's going on? How are you doing? Greetings, my friend. I'm good. I'm good. How are, are you? you? Good? How's the fishing going? Um, honestly, I'm not fishing. I'm just taking shelter here right now until I, like, starve out or something. Here, take some that, water, uh, bro. I'm too scared to put it back down. Oh, thank you so much. I can't thank tell you. if you're American or British. I'm British, yeah. Okay, nice, nice. Because every time I meet somebody, I'm like, I always put on either an Indian or American accent, and then, um... Yeah, your American like, accent's just, really good, when man. When I speak to people in Boston. Thank I, you. I thought you were American. Very, very nice. Honestly... 
Honestly, I'm from the northeast of England, but I can't really talk that much normally. Yeah, I'm giving them all out. Pumpkin for you as well. Oh, he doesn't even know what's going on. Well, there you go. Yeah, he's just the toilet dweller. Hello. There you go, mate. Boom. Oh. oh. Pumpkins all around, mate. There you are, man. Adios. Oh, yeah. Oh, I. Adios, bro. Okay, we're getting out. It was nice. I was going to spend the night there, but I've changed my mind. Might as well get home while it's night. We've got 190 cloth. This is huge if we can make it back. <laughs> Mate, I don't get this game. Okay. Oh, we made it back. That was close. I heard a player right next to me. Could have had any weapon. I don't know. But he's got boots on. You can hear him. Oh, that was lucky. He's probably going to knock on my door. He's right outside the door right now. We made it back. Side note, screw you pigs. I hate you with a passion. We've actually got some cloth now. And we've got quite a bit of rope as well. So we can craft a few crossbows. Yeah, let's craft a revolver as well. Okay, I've finally got a revolver. I need to kill this guy that's freaking going around the neighborhood with his revolver. Especially the new, the nakeds. This is for the nakeds. There's a player over there. That could be him. It's a paddle guy. Killed him. Where's this revolver? That's the first thing I want. Oh, yeah. He had a decent amount of stuff. Question is, where's his revolver? Because he's going to come straight back out. There, he, there it is. Got it. Boom. Woo. That's what you get for killing all the nakeds, man. Just because you've got a revolver next to ranch, you think you're all high and mighty on wipe day. We're probably going to hear him in a sec. Just run over here. Okay, we've got an extra revolver. Easy stuff. And an extra bow. I think he's back. Someone is anyway. Yep, there's a player there. Hit him again. And killed him again. Oh, give me another revolver, mate. Karma's coming right your way today, and I'm, the, I'm happy to administer it. On behalf of the Rust Gods, you are receiving some good old-fashioned Camarino. Yeah, he lives in that tower there. Meet Bonanzo. This is the infamous revolver man that we've been hearing for the past hour or so. We've got the intel. Seems like he lives in this tower right next to Ranch. And he seems to have quite the inventory of revolvers. Now, we're going to get to know this guy a bit better as the day progresses. But a good start. We've got the upper hand on this dude. And, uh, yeah, thanks for the two revolvers. Let's mark that down on our map. We've got the Russian boys living next to the rock over here. And we've got Bonanzo living in his tower next to Ranch over here. Hey, mate. Take this. Hello, man. Oh, thank you, bro. Do you have some pickaxe? Do you have some pickaxe? Oh, thank you. Some good kills for us there. I will say, though, we killed this guy twice, but on both occasions, we were stealthy and we got, like, the first shot on him. I feel like if you've got a crossbow nail gun or a crossbow revolver, if you get the first crossbow shot on someone, they're pretty much done. Because it's like, at that point, you know what I mean? At that point, it's kind of like... The one crossbow shot does so much damage. And you just need to do a few more hits. So they were cheap shots, but you gotta do what you gotta do, boys. Okay, I'm hearing an, I'm hearing more revolver shots. I don't know if this is the same guy, but let's go. Okay, he's moved over here. I'm gonna go over here. See if we can kill him. I've not got any bandages on me this time. So hopefully we can just get a quick kill. There we go. Hopefully we can just get a little quick kill. Okay, play of that. Nail gun. Let me get back to base for that. I need to heal. Extra crossbow. Okay, we're going to make a trip to the harbor. Going to try and get that blue key card. All right, we're at the harbor. Kill them. Ooh. 50 scrap. And he had... Um, 200 cloth almost. Okay, let's grab the blue key card and dip. Get home. All right. Switch is on. Oh, no, it's already been looted. Of course it has. Because the door's already open. That means it's already been looted. Yeah. Blue key cards are going to be very sought after. 
Okay, well, whilst we're here, we'll do some recycling. This guy has some components and stuff. Like, at a certain point, I will... In fact, I'm going to save up my springs now. I'm going to start saving my springs, my gears. Anything to craft a uh, semi-automatic rifle, I'm going to save up from now on. But everything else can get in that recycler. Because, yeah, that's another thing. Once we've got the um, tier 2 workbench down, we can just craft ri uh, semi-automatic rifles then. We don't need to uh, farm the scrap to get down there. I logged on this morning at about 7 in the morning. This server wiped at 2 p.m. Uh, oh, no, 3 p.m. And, yeah, I logged on at 7 a.m. this morning with no blueprints. Three, four hours later, I'd managed to get about 2,000 scrap, so... It's always worth it, guys, if you're a solo player, just to log on the server before it wipes. A few hours before it wipes. There's no players on it at all. So you can just get the blueprints. And then when the server does wipe, you'll have the blueprints and you won't have to farm all the extra scrap to get guns and stuff. All right, we made it back to the ranch. Please, bear. I do not want to... I, I, I just, just not today, bear, please. Just not today, man. Bear! Ah, I hate these animals. It's all right. We're, um, we, spot, we died right next to the base. Should be all right. Boom, got it. Oh my god. Right, we made it back. <laughs> what is with all the animals? It's meant to be wipe day. Why is nobody killing them? On the bright side, we made it back. We've got 190 scrap now. So we just need 300 more and we'll have the tier two. Somebody's rocking a car already. No way. Already. Need to find out what, the, what engine he's got in this. Oh no, it's not. It's right there. Oi! Nice ride, bro. Look at that turbo. Absolute skills. Well, look who we've got here. The man who owns this pretty awesome car, I'm not gonna lie, happens to be our old pal Bonanzo. I, uh, I must admit, I'm impressed that he's got a car like this so quickly into the wipe. This made me think for a second. Does Bonanzo actually live in the tower that we initially thought he lived in? Well, the answer is yes, and that will be confirmed shortly. But I believe there is more than meets the eye to this guy. I think he's got connections, put it that way. Because although he seems to be living in a solo player base, I believe he may have access to a much larger base close by. Maybe some kind of alliance or agreement, or maybe he just has friends and he's decided to go and do his own thing for the wipe. Who knows? But yes, there's a few question marks regarding this guy. Is this the guy I've been killing all day? Because he's got nowhere to store this car, so this isn't his. Now, with our goal of building a car dealership, we need to progress as fast as possible. As soon as we've got the Tier 2 workbench, we can start building our car workshop. This is where we're going to obviously customize the cars before they go out on sale. So, with that in mind, I headed over to the fishing village, accepted the quest, and got to work farming the ocean. In no time at all, I had managed to accumulate a decent chunk of components from the ocean floor. And of course, after turning in the quest, I received my reward of a pump shotgun. All right. We now have a pump shotgun. Okay, now I really want to go and recycle some of the uh, stuff we've just got. Because if we recycle just a little bit, we'll have enough for the tier 2 workbench. Um, but there's a very high chance there's going to be people in this uh, lighthouse. So, sort of risking a lot of here. But let's do it. Screw it. Oh, can already hear a player. Pump shotgun at the ready. Sounds like he's recycling. What? Got him. I'll take those recyclables. Thank you. Okay, we got to be careful. I saw a guy in a boat scouting out. Well, I don't see his boat, which is a good sign. This guy died right here, and he had a bunch of stuff on him. Hazmat. Okay, we'll take it. I wonder who keeps turning the lights off in this place, but can you keep them on, please? All right, come on now. Hurry up. 306 scrap. We've got enough. I'm just going to wait for this real quick. Come on. Come on. Right, it's time to get out of here. We're dipping. We're grabbing our boat, and we're dipping. 336 scrap. This is one hell of a run. Two laptops and a CCTV camera. And a pump as well, of course. Not bad at all. We'll take it. Now, after a successful little trip underneath the ocean, I made my way back to our little base over near the ranch. But upon return, I noticed there was quite a few new bases that had appeared since I was gone. Things move fast on wipe day. Within the matter of an hour, there could be a giant clan living next to you. Fortunately for us, there's no giant clan that's just randomly decided to live next to us at the ranch here. But there is this rather unusual base that popped up with wood walls around it. Who puts wood walls around the base before the base is even completed? Well, this guy, clearly. It's a little strange, but give it time, boys, because we're going to find out exactly who lives here very soon. Uh, it seems to be going around a relatively small base. 
Okay, that's interesting. <laughs> that's the, the smallest compound I've ever seen. It's tiny. It's just going around a two by two. Or even not even that. Okay, we made it back. Oh, yes. 530 scrap. This is early, man. We've got, we've managed to get this early. 20 high qual. And I'm pretty sure we have enough for the tier two. Level two workbench is being crafted. Oh, there's our car guy again. Wait, does the car guy live in that? Car guy might live in that compound. Okay, I think car guy does in fact live in that base. Okay, there is this guy has just built a brand new base right here. And he's just plonked his car inside. It's a solo player. See, he's got a car in there. He's moved his base. Hang on a minute. This is the exact same tower that that Bonanzo guy lives in. This is the guy that we, that the revolver dude. Seems like he's decided to live next to us. Very next to us. So it turns out Bonanzo has decided to leave his little rock tower base and move right next to us. He lives in a very small base, but don't let this fool you. This base design is pretty crazy. It's like a one by one tower, but it's super secure. Anyway, it's not gonna get in the way of anything we're doing. Bonanzo's got a car. He's driving around doing his own thing, not really causing us much bother. Meanwhile, we have a tier two workbench now. We can expand the base, add loads of garage doors, and get our base fortified and secure. Car guy. <laughs> Honestly, this is cool. The fact he's just casually got a car so quickly. Can you get out again, mate? You're gonna drive away. In a bit. Oh, cowboy's back. He's driving home. I think there's two nakeds outside making an alliance. You can hear them talking to one another. Should we go and lend a helping hand? Look at that. We got this badass for a little bit. Friendly, friendly. I, I ain't got time to die, bro. I, got, I ain't got jack. And you waste your time killing me. I got nothing. Oh, you're a G, bro. You're a fing G. So, man. All good, mate. You know who that guy sounds like? He sounds like Roy Kent from Ted Lasso. Or with the like grunty voice. Sneaky buggers. These farms are so cool. Oh, there's a player. Hello. Oh, oh. <laughs> I didn't realize they were there in the base with his egg suit. 
Yeah, well, nice farm, boys. Also killed a bear, which is nice. 100 animal fat. Okay, made it back. Let's get those furnaces on. I did organize my loot, which is a proud achievement. We've got our components in this box. We've got our weapons in this box and car parts. Uh, we are a little bit low on weapons. We've lost a few. We need to craft more revolvers. Still got our trusty pump, though, which is good. Okay, back out. We're going to go do another trip. This time, we need to really focus on resources. I need metal ore. I need, I need wood. I need stone. We need all the whole nine. We need it all. It's about time we got some comfort in this base. That gives us 70. That gives us 93 Almost, yeah, 100% comfort. Now we're going to heal up to full health without having to waste bandages or food or anything. Comfort, highly, highly underrated. It's, it's got to have comfort in your base. Look at that. Boom, 100 HP. Okay, I've just done some resource farming. I'm going to um, start working on our loot room, which is going to be right here. Uh, in a similar fashion to the last base I built on the island... I'm going for kind of an open plan ground floor. I want everything to be accessible from down here. Upgrade that to stone. Now the top floor, I'm going to have electric furnaces here. And then the bottom floor, I'm going to have some extra boxes. So we're going to have storage. And we can even use this bit here for a box as well. We can sneak a box in there. These furnaces are going to get picked up. And then right there is where our battery is going to be for our electricity. So, um, yeah, a lot more compact. I'll try and make it as clean as possible down here. So I'm not constantly staggering against stuff. It's going to be pretty. Once it's done, it'll look pretty cool. All right, we've upgraded the base. We've got garage doors down, but things are about to get a little bit more interesting. See, whilst I was out on a little bit of a farming adventure, I stumbled upon this base right here. What? What is this? Now, at first glance, this base definitely sparked my interest because it seems as though it may be a car base. Now, remember at the start of the video when I talked about how cars are becoming more and more common? Well, I definitely didn't expect to see this many cars this early on in my wipe. My closest neighbor's got his own car, and apparently this dude in this little wood base potentially has a car as well. This guy's got solar panels, and most of his base is made out of wood. Hello there. Whoa! Chill out! Oh my god, he's got two cars, this guy. This guy's got the exact same idea as me. How much for a car, man? I'd love to buy one. Oh, okay, he killed me. And he's got a massive gun as what the hell? Now, it would seem that everyone's got a car except me. And I'm the one trying to start a car business. Anyway, this base is definitely worth investigating. We could potentially steal this guy's cars. At this moment in time, he has both of his cars stored behind two wood doors. All it takes is one Molotov and we'll be inside. Now, as you can see, both of his cars have got code locks on them. But because there's a car lift inside this base, provided the car lift is turned on and powered up, if we do get inside this base, we'll be able to take the code lock off and place a code lock of our own. All we need to do is get inside, access the car lift, and the cars are ours. It may seem a little bit dodgy, um, stealing other people's cars, but I'm a struggling startup. We've got to do what we've got to do to get our business up and running. Plus, it's easy pickings, I'm sorry, but two wood doors for two cars. We've got to try and snatch these. Two car bases now. His name is Hobar something. Now I went back to this guy's car base just to scout it out a little bit. Upon investigation, I kind of realized that actually, I might be able to break into this guy's base without using Molotovs at all. So before researching the Molotovs and crafting a few, I went the eco route way and broke through this guy's soft wall. Unfortunately though, it was all blocked off up here. So we are in fact gonna have to use Molotovs. Back to base. Molotovs researched. Let's burn down some wood doors. And we've also got a saw just in case we just don't have that damage or whatever. So we'll have enough basically is what I'm trying to say. I'm going to take all these car parts with me. Just These are all rubbish, basically. We'll take them with us, though. And we'll take a little bit of low grade with us just in case we can actually get in a car and bring it back. Boom. See if we can steal our first car. Okay. Uh, right. Let's try this out. Hopefully that works. It's on a slight angle, so it might mess up. 
Well, let's see. Is it damaging the door? It is. Oh, yeah, we're in. We're in. I want to get that car, the camper van. Hey, go on. His electricity's turned on, which is a good sign. And he's right. Let's see. We can work. Yes, we can change the code. 5577. The car is now ours. We can get inside it. Boys, we're stealing a car. Now I broke the wrong door, but that's fine. Might need another Molotov. Let's destroy this. Just random car parts. Okay, we've got to get this car out. It's got a camper van and everything, which is awesome. Molotov number two is being crafted. So you, you did have two cars. I'm not sure what happened to the other one. All right, let's go. Destroy that. I should have thrown the Molotov in the middle because I'm pretty sure these Molotovs can destroy two doors at the same time. And by the way, these things are absolutely OP. It's already cheaper than a flamethrower to low grade wise and it destroys the door way quicker. Don't think I'll ever use the flamethrower again. We're out. Let's go. Boom. We've stolen our first car straight to the dirt road and straight home. Oh, that's so good, man. We stole our first car. Right, back at base. Right, when it gets to morning, we need to build a car garage extension. Let me quickly get in the back to see if there's any loot in here. And also, I need to clear the beds. There you go, make bed. Now this is our bed, bed in here now. The guy had no loot stored in here. Okay, when it gets to morning, we'll build a car garage. It's going to be a lot cheaper if we have the car garage separate to our base as a separate base. I'm going to do that. It's hard to explain. Well, it's not hard to explain. It's just the bigger your base gets. For instance, if you expand your base with an extra 2x2, two two, it will still be cheaper to have a 2x2 two two than it will be an extra 2x2 two two attached to your main base, if that makes sense. Because of the way that it exponential, exponentially gets more and more as your base gets bigger and bigger. It doesn't just add a 2x2 two two onto the cost of the tool cupboard upkeep. It does something else. I can't, I don't know. Blizzard knows it better than me and base builders know it better than me, but they can explain it. But it is cheaper to, to build a separate sort of thing if you're going to do something like this. Anyway, capiche? Look it up, boys. I, I know it makes sense. That's why people build separate farm bases and stuff like that, because it's more of an upkeep thing a lot of the time. Actually, you find that people build car garage bases separately as well. You know, there's many reasons for it, but yeah. Let's build a separate car garage or car workshop. And this is where we're going to customize all the cars and get them ready for to be sold. Okay, let's get this car inside our new car garage base. This is just where we're going to store cars and uh, customize them and everything. And then eventually we'll have them on display, but we'll build that later once we're ready to sell them. Just got to line this up properly. It's quite a big boy, this one, with the camper van. But fits very nicely in there. Right, we'll be able to fit three cars in here. We'll have one, two... Three. This will be a smaller car, but as I said, this is where we're going to customize the cars. We'll have our car lift in here, and we're going to have all sorts of cars for sale. Camper vans, smaller cars, storage cars, you name it. The main thing with this, which, which is what I did with my last car shop, you've got to sell cars with armored cockpits, otherwise they're useless. So as you can see right here, the cockpit is just open. Anyone can shoot you through this window. So it's very important that every car that I sell has an armored cockpit. But that's a tier 3 item, so we'll have to research that. But it won't be that hard. I'm not going to be selling cars with freaking shoddy cockpits that are going to get you killed as soon as you leave the dealership. You know, my name is Wormwood, but I ain't running a shady business like the actual Wormwood. Nobody ever got rich being honest. All right, so now we've got our main base, our car garage base, which is decaying. It needs metal, I think. We'll do that in a sec. So, after a successful raid, we've managed to get ourselves a car. And we've started the foundation of our business with our car workshop. Now, I decided to go back to this guy's car base just to see if I could get into his main core using only Molotovs. But unfortunately, this guy had sheet metal doors. 
Also, I checked his Steam profile and he only has 700 hours. I mean, that's quite a decent amount of hours, but I'm not going to save up satchels to raid this guy. We've got other goals that we should be sticking to right now instead of farming sulfur. Hello. Oh, it's my mate. How you doing, Bonanzo? He's got all these car parts. So, on that note, our main base is due for some upgrading. Now, this wipe, all I want to do is build a base that's discreet and that won't get raided. So, with that being said, I'm using the age-old tactic of upgrading the honeycombing to wood. This makes the base look pretty newbie from the outside, but on the inside, the core is all metal and armoured. Trust me, guys, if you're a solo player and your base has got key locks on it, add a bit of wood honeycomb in, and voila, you'll blend into the scenery. Nobody's even going to notice you. I, I want to play on the server. Oh, thank you. All right, we've got a base with wood honeycomb in, so if you do decide to raid me... You'll be in a, you'll be, a, you, which, which nobody is going to, because they're just going to look at this base and think it's a noob. But if somebody does, the base on the inside is pretty well secure. Of the best of both worlds. Mate. Hey, he had a revolver, this dude. Oh, the farm's looking good. They've got Christmas lights up. They've... You know what? I would love it if these guys actually lived in this base as their main base. Honestly, farms are one of the coolest things on this game. Especially if they know what they're doing. The berry farm stuff. Like, for me, it's way too complicated. They have three floors. <laughs> That's one big farm right there. Hey, please don't kill me. I'm begging you. Please. I will drop you, um, 283 metal ore outside your base on the ground also nice mailbox hey I. hello i love your videos oh no way hello thank you man appreciate that a nice base um okay well look have thank you yeah have a good wipe right outside your door i'm gonna give you a gift um you need to upgrade your base to stone so i've dropped some stone outside your door okay good luck yeah thank you Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm going to set a marker on the map for friendly. We'll set a marker that's that, and it'll just be like... We'll just have it like that. All right, that's that. That's our alliance marker that we've just placed down. Oh! Please! Honestly, can't get any peace around here. Solar panel is down. I'm gonna make sure I'm way less messy with the pipes this wipe. You guys saw my base in the on the island last wipe. It was a mess. Okay. I'm turning everything on. Let me explain how this works. Any metal ore or sulfur ore that gets deposited into this box here automatically gets transported into our electric furnaces up here. Once it's finished smelting that sulfur ore and metal ore into fragments or sulfur, then it gets transported into this box right here. As you can see, it's already started transport. Now, any metal ore or sulfur ore that gets stored into our tool cupboard also automatically gets put into the electric furnaces. Because, hey, we all do that thing where we just put everything in our tool cupboard. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are probably the same. Hmm, there's a bow guy killing a little naked outside. There you go, mate. Leave the nakeds around here alone. Oh, he's doing okay as well. I will 100% take that. Now that our base is complete, it's secure, we've got electricity, industrial pipes, it's time to move our main focus to the final step 
and that is getting that tier 3 workbench down so we can craft armoured cockpits and officially get some cars for sale. So, the fastest way to get scrap, as a lot of you know, the underground tunnels. And, it seems I'm not the only one on this server with the same idea. Underground tunnels are OP. Are also a pretty good spot for PvP. I'm hearing shots in the tunnels. There's a player down here. Oh my god. Someone's just caught the elevator. There's a dead player there. Over oh, has he? Don't forget there's a player coming down into the tunnels. I'm going to close those doors. Oh, this guy had a gun. And a has he. And loads of meds. How'd he die? But as I said, there is another guy coming down here behind us. So I don't want to spend too long here. Now all you've got to do in the underground tunnels, if you don't know, is just run in one direction, kill as many scientists and loot as many boxes as you can. And then when you think you've got too much loot and you're a bit scared, you turn around, you head back, and you leave the underground tunnels a rich man. But obviously, that's easier said than done. I did this exact thing right here. I ran through the tunnels, killed a load of scientists, looted a load of boxes, but on my way back, I was met with some adversity. Killed him. There's a player coming down here. I want to grab this guy's loot and dip. I don't care about the rest of the loot. I don't care about his gun either. His gun was rubbish. Let's go. Let's keep moving. We need to get back now. Oh my god. You absolute rat. Any more of you down here? I knew it. I knew I should have been. I did the exact right thing there. I took my time. Now after a successful tunnel run, I was able to start researching some stuff, including the CCTV camera and the computer station. Of course, we're going to want good surveillance in our car shop. Now that everything in the tier 2 is researched, the only thing we literally need now is a tier 3 workbench and enough scrap to research the armored cockpit. So of course I headed straight back out. I'm not gonna kill you. Good luck. Take this, you might need it. Everybody loves a good paddle. Oh, he's already got one. Oh, well your mate can have it. All right. Now right here, we were able to get a little bit lucky. See, right outside of our base, there was a car that spawned with an armored cockpit already. Cars can spawn with armored cockpits already, but it's completely roll of the dice random, so it's a lot better if you're able to craft the individual car modules so that you're able to fully customize them yourself. But either way, this is going to allow us to make trips to the outpost to do some recycling. The chances of somebody killing you while you're inside this thing is very low. As I said at the start of the video, these armored cockpits take some beating. So as long as you keep driving, nobody's going to be able to touch you, which means you can pretty much load up your inventory with all the components you've managed to farm throughout an entire day or two, and you can pretty much rest assured that you'll get to the outpost alive. And so that's exactly what we're going to do here. First thing we need to do right now is we need to craft a car lift for our car garage. Alright guys, I've got the car lift. I need to move the cars real quick to give us some space. Boom! Right, I've attached the electricity to our car base. All right, let's get to work on our first car. This is going to be my personal car, by the way. This is all I need. Look at that engine, armored cockpit. This is my personal car. All right, let's get our car on the car lift. Work on the vehicle. 
So instead of using the low quality car parts, we're going to go with the medium. And I'm going to be selling all of my cars with the medium quality car parts. Code lock right here. Have the code be, I don't know, 8273. When you put a code lock on it, you, are, you don't have to enter the code if you're the owner. So the code could be anything. You can forget about it. Okay, I'm going to add the smart switch. Connect this to the doors. Now let's connect this to our phone. Now when I press the button, all these doors should open. Let's test it out. Yes. There we go. And close. Very nice. And if anybody runs in here, they're going to get stuck. And they're not going to be able to do anything because my cars have got code locks on. Repair that and repair that. All right, car's fully repaired now. Right, now let's go grab all of the components we've got that we want to recycle and bring it in here. We This is going to be a big trip. Okay, I have a lot in my inventory. A lot of cloth, especially. Okay, let's go. Oh, we made it into the car garage. Yes. Outpost markers going down. Right, car starts up. We we get out. Doors close behind us. Right, we're off. And there's the outpost up front. We are living really close. That literally took less than a minute to get from our base to the outpost. All right, we'll park the car right here. We'll park it in this little thing here. There you go. Nice little tiny car. It's just great. Right. That'll do. We're going to be at the outpost for a while. I'm going to recycle everything. Then I'm going to use the oil refinery to get literally loads of low grade so we can just drive around. And uh, yeah. But yes, we're at the outpost. Hopefully there's a recycler free. There's a lot of people here. Oh, there's no recyclers free. The thing is, right, I, res I like Rustified, and I also like Rustoria. This time I'm on Rustified. The one thing I will say that Rustoria does a little bit better than you boys at Rustified is they, they do have more recyclers on their at their outpost, which I'm just saying. And they also have seats that you can sit down in. All right, well, I'm here. He's recycling. Right, he's done. Nice. Let the recycling begin. Okay. I'm going to keep some sewing kits, actually. But from just recycling, we got one, two, three, four, five thousand cloth, 140 rope, 500 scrap, 50 high qual. Okay, pause the video for a second. Because I need to explain something to you guys. This right here is possibly the luckiest moment I've ever had in Rust. Prepare yourself, boys. See, right here, I was actually about to leave the outpost. I left and I headed to my car. But for some reason, just as I was about to get in the car, I decided to turn around and head back in the outpost. Oh, yeah. It was the crude oil. I noticed that there was 500 crude oil in my inventory and I wanted to turn it into low grade and use the oil refinery. But this decision to go back into the outpost is one of the luckiest decisions I've ever made in this game. Because you see, what you're about to witness, I can't even explain. What? This guy is giving away all of his winnings. Okay, I'll, I'll have a little, I'll have a little bet. I'll have a little bet. Why not? You know, not, not a lot. Not a lot. 16. I don't know how this works. It's blackjack. Uh, I'll just put max bet and see what happens. You've got to get 21, haven't you? I'm going to hit because I've only got 9. Okay, I'm going to stand with that. What's he got? Did I win? I won! I won! Bro, this guy's just dropping loads of scrap. This guy's just just rich. Mate, mate, mate! What's going on? Bro, 
bro. Rain and scrap. Give it to me. Oh my. What? I, I just got almost 200 scrap off the guy. And he's still... He's... What is he found? Has he found some kind of like... Has he found some cheat code for for freaking blackjack or something? устала, мужики. Сейчас погодите, отдохну. He's speaking Russian. Somebody, somebody, um, translate that. What's going on here? Oh my god, this guy. I'm I'm at the spot where it's dropping. I've got the strat down. Give me it. Boom, 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 boom. I'm, I'm literally, at this rate, I might get the tier 3. But it, it, he's, he's doing it fair. Look at us all hounding him like freaking... Yo! This is crazy. I'm at 732 scrap. I, I, I originally started at 500. I want to see if he keeps going. I mean, I, I might as well. Hey, yeah, boy. It's back. The spam is back. He's found... This guy's found some, some, some sort of cheat code on the freaking blackjack machine. Give it me! Stealing my scrap! Now, I didn't know what to expect with this. I didn't know exactly how much scrap we were gonna get. But one thing's for sure, I sure as hell wasn't leaving. So let the scrap rain down on us. If we can get to 1,200 scrap from this guy, that will be insane. That is the cost of a tier 3 workbench. If we, <laughs> So if we manage to get that, madness. If anybody speaks Russian watching this video, please translate. Because I need to know what this guy was saying. I need to know how he got all this scrap. I love you. I'm at 1,000. Oh no, he's not. What the hell? He's still, no, he's still going. I love you too. <laughs> what is going on? What is going on? Right, I'm pretty. Is he out now? Is he out? Okay. Oh, no, he's not. I don't... Okay, we've got enough for the tier three. Oh my god, what is going on? One thousand four hundred scrap. And to think I was going to leave at seven. Game over. Game over. I love you. you give me, please, 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 please. It's over, mate. It's over. You, you missed please out. Give me any scrap. I'm, I'm zero loot. I'm zero loot. Yeah. 1,400 scrap. I just can't believe what just happened. Oui, très bien. Merci. Au revoir. A bientôt. So, yeah. We just got 900 scrap completely for free from some random guy in the outpost. This is an outpost beggar's dream. Once again, I'm just assuming this guy found some kind of trick with the blackjack machine or got really lucky. I don't know. For somebody to give away this amount of scrap so early in the wipe, it's only day number two. I don't even know what to say. All I can really say is if you're watching this video, Ro Dimish, then thank you. You are the definition of a legend. Anyway, let's get out of here and get back home. In total, we managed to get 1,200 low grade from the oil refinery. That's more than enough low grade for us to basically have unlimited mileage around the map. We could drive around the map a hundred times and we'd still have low grade left over. We also managed to get, of course, 1,400 scrap, enough for the tier three workbench. And on top of that, a crap ton of cloth. Home sweet home, my friends. Let's 
open up the garage doors. And close the garage doors and we're in. Right, um, look at that, 1,400 scrap. Level three workbench. Okay, I gotta run from here into my base. We made it, we made it. Whew. That was the riskiest part of the whole journey. Doors have been closed to our car workshop. Boom! Yeah, boys! We have a lot of cloth. Okay, I've managed to accumulate a lot of bear rugs. So it's about time we uh, made this base look a little bit more homely. Let's fill this place up with bear rugs. I've got a lot of them. Okay, we have lights. So I've added a couple couple lights in this base. The base is looking slightly more homely. I think, actually, there is one thing this base really needs. Okay, let me show you. There we go. The final added detail. Maybe even have another one right here. A smiley face on it. Okay. All right. Enough housekeeping. There's a road straight to harbor. I'm thinking we take the car over there, you know? When we get over to harbor, we can probably do an underground tunnel run and then just come back up with all the loot, get in the car, and go home. There's a player building a base right here. What on earth? I'm gonna get in my car. Freaking Batman! <laughs> Didn't expect that from a twig base. Now, I'll keep this short and brief because I know a lot of you are waiting for me to build the car shop finally. But right here is just an example of one of the ways that you can use these cars to do a little bit of farming. So right here, I drove the car to the entrance of the underground tunnels. I simply parked my car outside, went inside the tunnels, grabbed loads of components, came out of the tunnels, got back in the car, drove home. Boom. Another cool thing you could do with these cars is you can actually build a car that's got a storage container. I did mention earlier that this was going to be my personal car, this little small car here. But I realized after a while that actually it would be a lot better if I had this exact same car, but with a storage container on the back. Essentially a large chest box on the back of the car. Of course, the storage is also locked, so nobody can access it. I took this car out into the snow with the storage container and got to work. Essentially just driving out into the middle of nowhere where there's no barely any players in the snow. Farming all the nodes because as you know the snow is one of the most densely populated parts of any rust map when it comes to nodes, especially stone and sulfur. And all I needed to do was pop all the farm into the storage container and once it's in the storage container it's safe. I can exit the car, go and do more farming, and then once the storage container is filled to the brim with resources, drive home, boom, done. See, these cars are freaking awesome, man. If you're not using them as a solo player, I don't know what you're doing. And there we go. We've made it back with 500 scrap. Tier 3 workbench is down. Everything's back on. Okay, now in the tier 3. We need to get straight to the car parts. So, we need to research the armored cockpit vehicle module and all of these right here, right? I'll start by researching the armored cockpit and all these as well. Wait, we are there. I can do it all now. I've done it. Researched it all. We're ready to be, to open shop. Let's go. Now, at this moment in time, we've got two cars. We've got our personal car right here and then we've got this camper van car at the back here. The problem with this camper van is that it's not actually a camper van. Let me explain. In order to have an armored cockpit, you have to have a separate engine module. As you can see with our small car here, we've got the engine module here and then the armored cockpit here. That takes up two modules. Well, the camper van at the back there, it's not a big enough module car. It's not a four module car. It's only a three module car. And a camper van takes up two modules. A cockpit takes up one module. That's not enough. So, I'm going to convert this camper van at the back here into a storage car. And then, I'm going to go find a four module car that we can put the camper van on and convert it into a proper camper van. And, once again, 
I managed to get pretty lucky. Didn't take me long before I found a four-module car out on the roads. Ты моя оборона, да, защита моя. Гаси он того бомжа, он спереди, видишь? Гаси его. А он по-любому лутался. Oh my god, this is a super long car. I want that. I need that. This needs to be... I'm gonna remember where that is. Okay, this is gonna be a weird car to drive home in. <laughs> oh no, it's not. It's fine. Alright. Ah, uh, this car's got an armored cockpit as well. So, perfect. We won't have to craft one. There we go. All right, it's in. Let's turn the switch on and then that will automatically bring the car onto the car lift. All right, perfect. Okay, I just got to move things around a little bit a second. Okay, we got to take the camper van off there. Remove that like so. There you go. But I'm crafting the armored cockpit. Okay, this car... I'm gonna bring this in. Okay, good stuff. There you go. Camper van is on. And we'll switch these around. We're gonna go ahead and switch those around. Like so. Alright. Um, this car needs to have high quality parts put in it. But then once we've done that, this is ready to be sold. This will this will be ready to be sold. Ah, uh, you wanna race? Who's gonna who would yes, win? Yes, I wanna you, race. Okay. If you beat me, I give you... Uh, I think my horse is gonna win. Okay, let's go. I I, I just... I just stole my... <laughs> Adios, amigo! How's it going, mate? Yo, W car. Thanks, bro. Look at this car, bro. Nice. Hell yeah. yeah. Thank you, mate. That's car, bro. Good luck, man. Hey, I'll see you around, though. Good luck, bro. Hey! Oh, ho, 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 oh my god! This innocent hello, hello. man! You made me kill him! Hello. Hello. Alright, back at base. It's a little beauty, this car. that <clears throat> somebody just went down on the heli right here hopefully no nakeds are around here I want to loot the bodies he's got a rocket launcher and an AK no oh that was that was lucky bugger Oh my god, I've got an AK as well. Oh! I also have nine health. Oh! Yes! <laughs> okay, it's time to get the car shop built. Enjoy the base building montage. Let's get our business started.
Okay, guys, the start of our car shop has been built. And I'm going to transport the first car over here in just a moment. Right, the first car we're going to sell is the camper van. Heading back to our car workshop now. Right, we'll get it all fully repaired and everything. Oh, there is actually one thing I forgot. There is loot stored in here, which I need to remove. An AK, for instance. Imagine that. You buy a camper van and inside here, you just find an AK. <laughs> Maybe I should leave that in the camper van. Just as a little surprise gift to my the first person that buys this. Well, I don't know. Nah, I'm going to keep that for myself. We do have a few AKs now. and Let's place these car parts inside. The only thing left to do before we sell our first car is change the code. 7964. All right, let's get the camper van moved over. This is going to be receiving a new owner very soon. Right, open this door. We need to reverse the camper van inside. Let's get this car in its showroom. There we go, perfect fit. Absolutely perfect. Okay. Now then, if somebody wants to buy this car, this is how they're going to go about doing it. I am going to craft a note. Stop. Stop now. What the hell is wrong with you? Okay, we've got a player outside. Piece like... of coward. <laughs> Piece of loser. I need to grab a gun. Coward. He's calling me a coward. Who's the coward now, mate? I came out of my base with half health as well. Because I didn't have anything to heal. I'll take your stuff, mate. Thank you. Right, sorry. I was about to explain some stuff there, but we had a little guy that wanted to be a bit of a nuisance. Right. As I was about to explain. Right. We've got the note. This note is going to have the following written on it. Thank you for buying a car at Wormwood's Car Dealership, the most trusted car salesman on Rustified. Enter this code on the garage door, and then, once inside, unlock the camper van with the same code. I think that's pretty easy to understand. Code 7964. Straight to the point. All right, then. Now we're going to place this note inside of the vending machine, and we're going to go ahead, and we're going to sell a note... Now, I'm going to sell this camper van for several different payment options. So, you know, we, we're a car shop. We give you many different options, all right? You can tell what your budget is, but we can work around it. First and foremost, we're going to sell the car for metal fragments. For 2,000 metal fragments, the car is yours. I'm also going to give the option of buying this car with metal ore as well, but it'll be slightly more expensive. And then the final two payment options, wood as well. We will also do the same offer. We'll sell that for 9,000 wood. And the final payment option is scrap. For 350 scrap, you can get it. All right, so we've entered all the payment options. Now, I'm going to change the name of this vending machine to Armored Cockpit Camper. All right, there we go. The first car is for sale. The name of the vending machine is Car Shop Armored Cockpit Camper. I don't even have to be at the base and somebody can buy this car now. Okay, there's a few things we need to do to this car shop, though, to make it more obvious that it's a car shop. Hello there. I'm trying to paint. I'm, I'm trying to start a business here. Please don't attack me. Hello. Hello. Привет, мой друг. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Привет, хорошо все. Here, take this. It might come in handy. How are you? Oh, thank you very much. Very nice. There you go, mate. Hey, and look, listen. Um, you see this? Thank you. This oh. is this is for sale. I sell this car. The price? Okay, if you if you if you want to buy a car. Oh, no money. <laughs> well, you know, maybe maybe in the future you could come back. Okay, thank you. Hey, our first potential customer. Hello there. Privet. All right, I've made the sign. 
Car shop. Fully armoured. Medium quality car parts. 80 low grade inside car. Displayed. Clear as day. This guy just took a look. This guy just had a look inside. He saw the camper van. Maybe he's got a base somewhere and he's, he's going back to... Maybe he's going to farm. I don't know. All right. I'm going to add another sign that explains things in more detail. I've also got a neon sign right here. There we go. Hey, 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 hey. Don't attack me. How you doing, for? I'm setting up a little business here. Okay, I've placed a sign that gives you the details. Buy the note inside vending machine and enter the code. And then I'll put an arrow maybe pointing at the door like that. And then enter the code with an arrow. Yeah, that does the job. Now we're going to expand this because we want to sell two cars. So we're going to pretty much do exactly what we've done there and then add that onto there with another vending machine. And that vending machine will have another note inside for the other car. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's Hello. you again. Hello, how are you? How are you? Oh, wait, how are you? Good luck. Good luck, mate. How you doing? What's your... Oh, man. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the f***? No, mate. Ah, oh, no. Oh. Mate, sorry. You killed me when I was a naked. A little taste of your own medicine there for you, boy. Oh, it looks even better at night. Get a couple Christmas lights on this base. It's gonna be great. Okay, everyone. There you go. Added some Christmas lights. Added a nice ceiling light up there so you can see the sign at night. All right, let's go and have a look in the computer station. Okay, back at base. Enter there. Car shop 5 is the name of the CCTV camera. And boom. There you go. We have a clear view of the of our of our car shop. Now, right here, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to try and stay awake because I wanted to stick around until somebody bought the first car from me. But unfortunately, at this point in time, I'd been awake for at least 20 hours. And so I went to my bed for a quick little nap. But as everybody knows, that never works out when you're sleep deprived. And what actually happened was I fell asleep for about 10 hours. <laughs> but uh, I left my rust on and everything. My character died. And uh, yes. But on a more positive note, bring on day number three. Today's the day we're going to expand the business and hopefully sell lots of cars. Oh my god. How have we sold a car? We're about to find out. Wait, I think we might have, you know, because the shop is... I think we've sold a car! We've sold a car, man! We have! Either that or we've been raided. So we'll find out, but I think we've sold a car. Yes! Somebody bought it, man! Come on, let's go! That is awesome. Couple of nakeds out here. All right, close that. Oh, man. Right, that's the proudest thing ever. Would... Wormwood's car shop, boys. What did he buy it for? For wood. So it was probably like a naked that just went out farming. What a legend. Oh, I can't believe it. We did it. We sold a car and I wasn't even at the base. All right, so a bloody great start to the day, must I say so. After selling my first car and getting our business on the go, I was very eager to get the second car up for sale. But first, I needed to make a quick trip to the outpost to do some recycling and buy some stuff. However, upon arriving at the outpost, this happened. Oh, shit. I accidentally ran over someone at outpost. Yeah, I got killed. It's all good. I'm in the outpost. Yeah, if you run over somebody with your car at the outpost, then it counts as you attacking them, and therefore, you get killed by the turrets. But not to worry, because, again, nobody can steal our car. All we have to do is wait for the timer, and then we can enter outpost again. But the reason I'm telling you guys this is because this death caused me to find something very interesting. Oh, wait, and the ca Oh, oh, I've just realized. Hang on. I've still got the, I've still got the bed inside the camper van. That's, that's, that, that, um, that the guy bought off me. No way. Oh, what? Yeah, 
So, the camper van that we sold, our first car sale, I forgot to clear my bed from the back of the camper van. So, we were able to spawn back in it. And as you can see, this doesn't seem like this guy uh, got very far with the car he bought off me. I would like to say, though, before the comments come in and before, you know, the lawyers get involved, this has nothing to do with me. Our cars are all fully certified. They go through all the processes, you, you know, the the, 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 the the safety checks and everything like that. So, um, for the record, this is not uh, this is not a liability on my part. This is probably he was drunk or something like that. It, that didn't last long, did it? What happened? What happened? Bro! Guy bought a camper van off me and now it's this. <laughs> I really am. I really am wormwood, aren't I? That did not last long at all. All right, so we need to get this camper van back. We need to take it back to the workshop, repair it, get it all good to go for a resale. Obviously, we will go through the necessary checks to make sure that this doesn't happen again. Although, you know, I can't help if you're going to drink whiskey and drive. Anyway, we're going to take the car parts from our car at the outpost. We're going to leave our car at the outpost for now. Nobody's going to steal it. Should be fine. And then, uh, yeah, I've actually got backup resources in our storage compartment of the car outpost to repair the uh, camper van. Yeah, if you're going to drive a car around the map and it's got a storage container, I always take metal high quality wood with me just so that I can keep the car fully repaired at all times while I'm on the road. You're going to be waiting here a long time, boy. Fuck off. Zero to 60 and... Ah, nice car. Three hey, seconds. Yeah, boy. Oh, oh, nice. Yes. It's got a very, uh, very fast engine in here, boy. Nice. Very fast. Fast up furious. Hey, look, if you want to get, if you want to get your own car. Wow. Is it O3? That's a shop. You can buy a car there. Oh, oh, oh. It's called Car oh, Shop. Oh. O3. We're, we're, we're sold out right now, but yeah. I don't think he really understood what I was saying, but there you go. <laughs> oh. I got the car. I was literally right next to those guys with guns. Oh my god, that was uh, nerve-wracking. I just got to get this on the road. The key is driving these things on the road, boys. That's the key. All right, the road. Beautiful. Let's get home with the camper van. Hey, it's not my fault. Okay, this was the pro. I don't know if he was. I don't know if he was drink driving. I don't know what went on. But let's get this camper van fixed up and sold to a new owner that treats it right. Guys, help me please, my base raid, please. Please help me, my base raid, bro, bro, no, 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 please, no. Right, the car is back on the car lift. We're gonna get this all repaired nicely. I'm gonna have to run back to outpost now with car parts so that we can grab our other car. Hello, my friend. I'm friendly, my friend. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what is the key, man? Right, is our car still here? Looking good. Right, let's get this repaired. Let's go and put it back on for sale. And then after that, let's expand the car shop and add a second car for sale as well, which is going to be that small one there. Repair, repair, repair. Add code lock. The code is going to be 6039. Let's get all of these car parts back in the car shop. I didn't expect to see you again, camper, but here we are. Right, we've got to change the guest code on this door. Lock. All right, the note is inside. We are officially open for business once again. So, oh, wait, there's a player at the shop. He's just looking at the prices. He's thinking about it. This could be my next customer. I'm pretty sure somebody just... Oh, there we go. He's had a little look. We've got another guy over there as well. A lot of fresh spawns. Oh, you're about to die, mate. Yep, yeah, bear's killing you. Unlucky. Sorry, I'm going to have to respawn and uh, grab your loot. And he had a little bit there, but not much. 
Wonder if he'll come back. Oh, did you get my junk before I did? No, no. You know what happened? I was watching you on my CCTV Thank camera. Because I'm the owner of... Oh, uh, were you? Yeah, I was watching you die. No, no, I keep it. If you need it. Take it, take it. I, I've got I, guns I've and stuff. I've been chasing a bear for like a mile. All right. Well, look. Um, <laughs> if, follow me a second. I, I give you, I give you some stuff. But this is my car shop. If you, if you can get five, if you can get five thousand wood. I have this on my way. Yeah, then you can buy this, and you can actually five thousand wood. You can live inside it as well. Like it's pretty secure. You can have your sleeping bag in there. Isn't that a little cheap? It is cheap. Yeah. I mean, I, hey, I do good deals here, bro. Yeah, all right, all right. If you get the wood, if more you than do... a bargain. I don't really have a base yet, so I don't have a great yeah. way to store this. But I will keep that in mind. You don't need to store it uh, because it's got a code lock on it, so nobody can steal it off you. So just a heads up. But oh, that's pretty freaking awesome. If you do manage to get the wood, just buy the note from this vending machine. It'll give you the code, and then off you go. You don't. You don't. I don't even need to be here. So yeah. Okay. Let me see if I've got some loot I can give you. Oh, Hang on. That's awesome, dude. So you buy a, uh, a code from the vending machine, and will that let you through the garage door and into the car? Yes, it's the same. So you buy the note from the vending machine, and then on the note, it has the code, and then you just enter the code in here. That'll give you access, and then enter the code in the car, and it's yours. Easy as that. That's really freaking cool. I don't have much else to give you, because this isn't my, this is not my main base, but good luck, bro. That is awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks. We're in business. This is a, this is like the, my only my main customer base is naked on the beach. Five thousand wood is a bargain, eh? Yeah, it's all fun anyway, boys. Okay, grab my loot. All right, let's have a look through the CCTV camera again. I would like to say, um, a oh. Wait, what? It didn't work? Okay, real quick. My bad. There was a glitch. I accidentally put the wrong code on the note. So when this naked guy that we met earlier bought the camper van, the code didn't work. <laughs> so uh, luckily, he came back online. I typed in chat. I was able to get him back to the base to give him the car. I will not make this mistake again. Oh my god. Bro, I can't believe it. Come inside. <laughs> Thank god you're back online. I tried adding you on Steam and everything. All right. Um, so the code to this door, instead of instead of 6039, I put 6093. <laughs> so I was just like, right, good. Then put the code into this oh, car. there we go. Yep, yeah, 6039. Just a hold E on the code. Awesome. Right, now press X, on, to, press X to switch seat. Get in the back here with me. All right, press make bed on that. Press E. Uh, in front of you. It'll say make bed. It's done. Yeah, okay. It's done. All right, now you can spawn in this as well. You've got storage right here. Uh, if you look to awesome. to your left, there's a barbecue as well, and there's a box underneath for storage. Yeah, the car's got 80 low grade in the back, so you'll eventually need to fill it up. These, these cars actually are really efficient. They don't require that much low grade. You can probably go around the whole map and only use 40, so you're all good there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I'll open the door for you. Get in the front seat, get in the driver's seat. Eventually you'll want to store this away, but it's pretty safe because you're the only one with the code. If you wanna if you wanna change the code, you'll have to craft a car lift, but you should be okay. Alright. Thank you very much. Stick to the roads if you can. Good luck. I'll do that. <laughs> Hell yeah. What a legend. I'll do that. Immediately goes off-road. <laughs> Come on. I'll give him a wave. He's off. Okay, so we sold another car. Now, as you guys know, I'm a man of karma. I believe in karma. You reap what you sow. And uh, so, considering I'm trying to start a business here, I figured helping a noob might help me with my business. See, there was a guy in chat that said, can I join a team? And it just so happens I ran into this dude. Of course, I'm in a fresh born area. What do you expect? Oh, hello. Hey, you wanted a teammate. How's that going for you? Did you find anyone? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Well, here, I'll start a team with you. So I took this guy around the map a little bit and uh, built him a base, helped him out. Turns out he had literally just bought the game 
and uh, yeah, runs into me. Maybe we'll get some good karma out of this. Anyway, let's build that extension and let's get a second car for sale. Time to invest in our business and expand. Vending machine number two is going down. And we are now ready to sell our second car. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. All our electric furnaces are turned on at home, smelting sulfur and metal that we just farmed. Once that's done, we're going to do a raid. I think, uh, I think I've already got a target, boys. I'll tell you more about it once, uh, once, I'm ready, once we're ready to go and do that. But uh, yeah, first and foremost, let's get another car put on sale. This car's going to be cheaper. I'm not going to lie. It's been a while since I've driven this little little beauty. Alright, that goes on there like that. Right, repair. Repair. This time, Jordan. Get the code right. Right, small car. 4107. 4107. Can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to have to push it in. Sir, 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 I mean no harm. Do you have any cloth? I just need a ton of cloth. How much are we Not talking? A ton, as much as you can give. I don't know. At least more than 30. I need Can you guide bags. me in? Can you guide me in this base, please? I need you from the back. Okay, you Where am I going? To, this side, your right side is too far. Go. Okay. No, you gotta... Is that good? Yeah, let me... Okay, okay. You need to turn... You turn your left. No, 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 not like like turn backwards left. Oh, so sorry. So you're right. All right, now okay. good. Go back. Okay, is that good? Boom! Hell yeah! Yeah, there we go. I'm I'm selling. I'm a cash. I'm a car dealer, mate. <laughs> this one's already been sold. I don't have anything. I just need. Oh, let scrap. me get you some cloth. I need not scrap cloth. Dude, I have no cloth in this base. But follow me. I'll take you to my main base. Hello. Enjoy. Oh, thank you. And where? Quick question. Is anyone around here an enemy of yours? Yes. This Do you have any enemies? The guy over code. there. All right. I'm going to try to code lo code raid him. All right. All right. Let me know how it goes. All right. I'll be here for a long time. See you, man. <laughs> See you, man. Okay. I've got the lighting perfect for this shot. It's not, if this doesn't get sales, then I don't know. Yes. It might be better if we take a photo, like, outside. You know what I mean? Like that sort of thing. That is a million times better. Let's see. That's loads better. You've got to have the natural light coming in. Oh, perfect. Take our photograph. Pop it in there. Oh, look at that. Get a nice preview of the car. That is mint. That is going to sell 100%. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to I'm gonna go around the map and look for... um. Another car we can build. I found one already. Look at that. How big is it? Um, It's a small one again. We could sell two small ones. This is... You're very much a target in this. <laughs> the armored cockpit is key. Alright. Hello. Oh, wait. There's a car right here that's... Uh, big enough to have a camper van. Okay, we're going to grab this as well. Maybe give it a little repair just so it doesn't break. Okay, we've now got two cars for sale. Now, I remembered that there was somebody we made friends with earlier on in the wipe. Remember when I approached her base? 
Well, I decided to go and see how she was doing and maybe uh, see if she was interested in buying a car. Anyway, turns out she's doing pretty well. Hello? Oh, it's you. How you doing? I'm good. Hey, I have a car shop now. I'm selling cars. So if you want to buy a car, O3, there's a shop. O3 and where in the middle or, or on the edge? On the edge, middle of O3 in, in, on the coastline. Yes. Doing some raiding. You're doing some raiding right now. Do you need some... Um, yeah, I did some raiding. Bro, like, you're kidding uh, out, man. Are, are you st is this your main base? Um, no, it's uh, complicated. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Do you need some weapons or something? I have... No. I, I got, like, a lot of loot. One. I have a... I, I do have AK and stuff. Wait, 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 wait. Guys, can I borrow one gun? What do you want? Anything, I'll take anything. I'll take anything for uh, any gun. Any anything yoga. Anything for you. I don't have any yoka. All I have is a bow with no arrows. But I'll take it. You know what? I'll I'll give you no, I'll give you hmm, I'll give you I'll give you that. Boom. Make a play. Hello there! My friend, hang on. All right. So this is the car shop. Um, as you can see, we have two little small cars available. Oh, you bought one. Oh, hell yeah. All right. And then just enter the code. There we go. And then the code in the car. It comes equipped with 80 low grade. More than enough to get you home. Looks great. Have fun. Okay, well, okay, good, good luck. luck. Bye bye. <laughs> All right, boys, we have sold, is it three? Yeah, three cars. We've still got two cars for sale, but another camper van and a small armored car. But I'm about to build an insane car. This is gonna be the double turbo extreme car. And it's gonna be sold for quite a lot. And it's gonna have the highest quality car parts in it. But you're gonna see, cause it's gonna have two engines and a storage compartment. Check this out. This car right here, it has two engines and a storage compartment. I might shift these around a little bit. Maybe we'll have, if we take all this off, this is what it looks like. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put the storage compartment at the front and the engine's gonna go at the back like a, like a, like a supercar would be. Boom, boom. There you go, storage at the front, engines at the back. This is gonna be, all the car parts in this are gonna be high quality. So let's make sure we get everything in there is high quality. There's one engine and there's another engine. Whoa, this is gonna be a beauty. Here we go. It's gonna be absolutely rapid. Let's go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is quick. Oh, this is quick. Probably uses a lot of low grade as well. Let's see how much it's used. This is gonna be the final car we pot for sale. If we can sell six cars, I'll be happy with that. Everybody's bought a car off me for wood so far. Nobody's used any of the pay other, other payment options, which makes sense. I think I think with the wood, it's a bit of a bargain, but I'm, I'm all about good deals. Okay, we're back. All right, let's see. 360 to 357. It barely uses any low grade like the rest of the cars. And it looks absolutely awesome. Now, whilst I was back at base and hanging out around the car workshop doing some bits and bobs, I noticed this. Has anybody bought the... Oh, somebody bought the car! Yes, we sold another car. Another anonymous customer bought a car from us. Brilliant. We didn't even have to be at the shop. That's the beauty of having an automated system. Now... I decided to drive over to the car shop just to double check and make sure that, you know, the person bought the car and stuff. And, uh, well, things are about to get a little spicy. Helicopter and I saw a player as well. 
Be careful there, boy. That's a dangerous weapon. How you doing? These are all sold out. I'm about to sell a camper van. I'm about to put that camper van on sale. The one on the far right. See, when I arrived back at the car shop, there was a random guy with a gun just hanging outside. Now, I tried to talk to him and he didn't really respond or say anything, but it was definitely a little bit odd that this guy was just hanging around our car shop. What are you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Me? <laughs> Just hanging around. Now, I didn't think much of it, and I sort of went back on my way. But then I noticed this. Right, let's go put the note inside the vending machine, get that camper van on sale. Hopefully, this camper van doesn't get destroyed, and I find it next to Outpost completely annihilated. Note is going in, and there's 5,000 wood. Good stuff. Oh, somebody's laddered up on top of my base. That's not good. Um, Okay. <laughs> Somebody has placed a ladder on my base. Maybe somebody was scouting around our car shop with the intention of raiding it. Hmm. I wonder who this could have been. Let's get the picture of the camper van down. Open up that. Lock edit. So there's a satchel raid going on right behind me. I'm going to go speak to them. Hey, boys. Nice satchel raid. What skin are you using? Now listen, if you get a good loot from this raid, you've got to buy a car from my car shop. Okay, I don't know if you speak English, but yeah. Very good. It's a solo player doing a raid. I respect that. Now the guy doing the satchel raid was the same guy that was scouting outside of our car shop just a few moments ago. Seems like an awful big coincidence that there was ladders on top of our base, and now all of a sudden he's satchel raiding somebody close by. It didn't take me long to put two and two together and realize that this guy was probably planning on raiding our car shop until I showed up, and then when he realized that we were online, he changed his mind and raided someone else. So... No more Mr. Nice Guy. I think he was scouting out my, my shop, you know. I genuinely do think he was scouting it out, thinking of whether he could raid it. Have I got an AK in this base? I do. Ah, how about we send it then? He landed up on my base, so I know this guy was going to raid me, or he's thinking about it. No, I'm not currently hearing anything. Oh, yes, I am. Sorry, mate, but you weren't talking. I'll take the explode ammo and I'll finish your raid for you, mate. If you don't mind. Sorry, you looked at my base. I know it was you that put the ladder on, so we know that much for a fact. Okay, where was he raiding from? He was trying to get down there. Hey, this guy has no name. Okay, we're in. TC's right there. Oh my god. So I think that's very interesting. Oh, but get counted, bro! Hello there! Anyone home? Twig base being built right there. Well, we'll maybe check that out. I need, I'm going to go depot this loot. We got a lot of low grade and crude oil. It's very useful. Oh, we made it! Bro, yes! We just sent it, man. 
Look at that. Loads of stuff to recycle. But the, this is not even the main loot. That's like the scraps. The main loot are stored away in the car. 800 low grade, 200 scrap, 60 high qual. Get in. All right, well, there we go, lads. An easy counter raid, free loot. It's always nice when you take a free raid, especially when there's decent loot inside. Now then, if you thought that was weird, get a load of this. Now, I'm not joking around. This is one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me in Rust. Just to be clear, this is all recorded on Rustified EU main. This is not scripted content or anything like that. But what you guys are about to watch might as well be scripted because it literally felt like something out of a freaking movie. Okay, allow me to explain. Whilst I was at the outpost doing a little bit of recycling from the stuff we just got from that raid, I noticed there was a guy in chat that said 20 versus 0, but I was AFK on base. And listen, the raid. Apparently, according to this guy, there was a clan of 20 going around the map raiding people. I couldn't believe it, and I didn't think much of it when I saw this message, to be honest. We're on the outskirts of the map. I'm not expecting a 20-man clan to be wandering around the corners of the map in the freshborn areas. So, honestly, I didn't think much of this message. But I definitely should have. See, I was back at our car shop doing some base upgrading, minding my own business. Just another Monday morning like every other. When all of a sudden, I heard this dreaded sound. And it can only mean one thing. Please don't land. Oh, flying. Oh yeah, they are landing. Looks like I could be about to get raided, boys. Yep. This isn't even my main base, boys. Yep. Remember that message that we just saw in the chat about a 20-man clan going around the map on a scrap heli at 6 in the morning? Well, looks like they've made their way over to our corner of the map. And they've landed the helicopter, which is definitely not a good sign. They're raiding me. Oh, my God. This isn't even my main base. You're not going to get anything. Now, you probably didn't hear that, but the scrap heli that just landed flew away and a car arrived. I think that this clan is patrolling around the map, not only with their scrap heli, but with cars as well, like some kind of hot pursuit. They've got the skies and the roads, and you definitely don't want to mess with these guys. store the loot in the camper van. They won't be able to get the loot in here. It's probably the safest place for it to be. I'm gonna take a picture of these boys. I love you! Now I quickly came to the realization that I would not be able to take these guys on. God knows how many there actually is, because there's only four outside my base right now, but clearly there's more in the scrap heli, potentially more in the cars driving around, who knows. So I decided making a getaway was going to be the best option. Good idea. Oh! No, pick me up, pick me up, teammate. I can't. Teammate. I can't. I'll die. We're gonna be in chase. Now, one of them jumped in a car and started chasing me. In order to shoot me, he had to stop his car and jump out, which is exactly what he did. This gave me a split second to cut off road. And for a moment here, it seemed like we were safe. I didn't hear the car chasing me. This is crazy. How is this happening at 6 a.m.? Okay, this needs to be repaired right now. Bro, you good? Yeah, yeah, all good. You good, bro? Out of nowhere, the kid who I helped build a base earlier just appeared. He must have got lucky and spawned on the beach right next to me. But at this moment in time, I must admit, I thought I'd made a lucky escape. But then it quickly dawned on me. These guys have got the skies. There's no escaping that. Oh no, I'm not good. Oh, 
Damn it. I don't think I have a, ba a bed there. Now, to be honest, I was a bit upset. I got raided, but there was something even stranger about this clan. They didn't seem to care about loot at all. See, I went back to my car base and all of the loot was still there. I was able to patch it up and take back our business. On top of that, I went back to see if our camper van was still there. It wasn't. However, these guys seemed to raid the base right next to where my camper van was just for fun, apparently. And they kept all the loot inside of this base. In fact, we actually made a massive profit because these guys just didn't want any of the loot. Now, I found our camper van as well. They drove it into the water. That's probably the worst thing they did to me. But they kept the loot inside the storage. None of it made any sense. So, we just got raided by a massive clan, but they didn't want any of our loot. So, it was more of a fun experience, if anything. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, well, on that note, this concludes the end of today's video. Now, before I left the business and everything like that, I put the remaining three cars I had up for sale. And I left my recording on the CCTV camera for 10 hours, just so that I could see if people bought the remaining cars from me. And it turns out they did. I even had the double turbo up for sale, which somebody bought. So I hope you had fun with that, whoever you are. In total, we sold six cars, which is a much bigger success than the last car dealership I built one year ago. I must say, now that you can put code locks on cars, they're way more useful and they're way more used. And uh, also, they're awesome for solo players. I would highly recommend it if you're a solo because you can get to the outpost risk-free and recycle everything. It's so good. And you can obviously drive to the snow farm, loads of stone, whatever, bring it back. These things are awesome. So give them a try. If you've enjoyed the video, everyone, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. Now, I don't upload super often, uh, especially compared to maybe other Rust creators, but I always try and upload the best videos I possibly can. And that's my number one goal on this channel. That's what I enjoy the most. And sometimes it might take a while, but that's the promise I can give to you is that every video I do post, I will always put 110% effort into it. So on that note, Thank you guys for sticking around. Thank you for being patient. Consider joining the Discord because I want to start doing some events to bring the community together a bit more. Links in the description. Also, consider following me on Twitch because I'm going to be doing a live stream tomorrow. It won't be Rust. It'll be a game called It's Only Up. And it looks so fun. I'm going to be playing that with Blizzard. And we're going to be competing against one another to see who can finish the game first. All right, boys. I'll leave you on that. Enjoy the rest of your week. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.